Guess what? It is college football week. It continues. You know who's here next, Tim? I tell me, please. Is it? It is the Florida Gators oh. head coach. Will Muschamp. He's walking out right yeah. now. Will Muschamp, we welcome you to the debate desk. Are you there or is he not? There he is. You're hi oh, hi. This way. <laughs> oh, You're coming to the right is. area. He's coming in. Here he is. It's a, it's a long, grand entrance. Here we go. Will Muschamp, ladies and gentlemen, will join the debate desk to talk with Skip and Stephen A. Does this man need a throne? Would you like a throne or a chair? You can have I'm good. Chair. You're good? Well, a chair is good for you. you good. Stick around, folks. We'll talk to him after the break. <laughs> Carrie Champion, nice to meet you. Hi, pleasure. Burton takes off and he's off to the races down the sideline. He broke a tackle. He might go. What a run. Touchdown. Bear blocked. Picked up by the Gators at the 35. Jenkins. Touchdown. Keeps it himself. Big game. Breaks loose. Driscoll. Touchdown! And Jones might ice it right here. Touchdown. Ball game. 24 unanswered Florida points. And the down. Our next guest has been the head coach at the University of Florida since 2011. They finished the season 11-2, including a 7-1 record in the SEC. We welcome in Will Muschamp. Thank you for joining us here at the desk. Kerry, great to be here at First Take. Oh, good. You're a fan you of the show. Uh, absolutely. Uh, who do you like most? No. Oh, God, <laughs> put him on the spot. I don't want to get into bed. <laughs> Coach, I, I, I tried to remember this morning, refresh myself on, you know, what exactly happened to the Gators last year? And I realized you only lost one conference game to your arch rival, Georgia, and it felt like you were an SEC also ran. What does that do to a coach's psyche in that league? Well, I, I don't really know about my psyche. I worry about our football team. And I know we gained a lot of confidence as a program last year. I'm really excited about how things have come together as far as our roster is concerned and where our locker room is right <coughs> now. So we're at a good place. We didn't end the season the way we wanted no. to in the Sugar Bowl. Obviously, we didn't play our coach very well, uh, but that certainly has been a motivating factor in the offseason for us. You know, uh, so, much, so, so much noise has been. When you talk about the SEC, obviously with Johnny Manziel coming on strong, Texas a and you look at Alabama, uh, obviously they are who they are, LSU. Uh, you didn't hear as much about Florida. You came off a 7-6 season, and then you went 11-2 and last year overall uh what was the mindset of your players last year as everybody was talking seemed to be talking about these other teams but not florida as much as they had in the past i really we try to focus on florida mm -hmm. uh, i don't know how or well, what they do other places and i'm really not concerned with it as long as we take care of our locker room and take care of our football team and prepare the right way uh, we're going to have a great season. But I ask that question only because of young minds on a football field. As a college coach, I'm quite sure you have to concern yourself with the mentality of young men. It's one thing if you're a professional, but when you're young, sometimes you get caught up in the wrong things in that regard. That's why I was asking you that question. Well, that's why I'm trying to focus them in on just focusing on what we need to do to be successful. We can't control what other teams do or what you guys say. Mm -hmm. We can control how we play and how we prepare. Mm -hmm. Coach, um, obviously, when everybody looks at the Florida Gators for this upcoming season, they're thinking of defense. It's going to have to carry you guys. I think you guys were ranked like 12th in offense in the SEC last year. I mean, what have you done to, what are you planning on doing to address that this season? Well, I think at all positions, we're, we've improved our roster. We're better up front offensively. I think we'll be as good or, or more, as productive at the running back position. We're better at the receiver position. I'm worried about tied in. We lost Jordan Reed to the Washington Redskins. And, but more than anything, we're going to be better at the quarterback position. Mm -hmm. Second year is in our system, number one, and second year for Jeff Driscoll. The, the mental quickness is coming, uh, progression things that he's got to do to be successful. I'm uh, really pleased with what I saw in the spring and looking forward to, to getting back in practice in August. How good could Jeff Driscoll end up being? I think he'd be outstanding. I mean, what? I think, uh, first of all, he's a great competitor, a uh, tremendous leader. He's an outstanding athlete. He is an but athlete. But again, you, the throwing part of that has got to slow down for him a little bit. He's got to make better decisions with the ball, and I think he will, but we're also improved around him. Yeah, yeah. So, who's, 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 who is he going to be throwing the ball to? Well, I think Quentin Dunbar is a guy that I'm really excited about that's really kind of come on. We've got some young receivers coming in. Uh, Matt Jones is going to be a feature back for us. Mac Brown's a guy that I'm excited about. And, again, I think we're, we're much more mature up front and better up front offensively. So if you had to pick somebody to win the toughest league in America right now, you would pick whom? As far as? To, to I, win I, it all. I'd pick the Florida Gators. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
What are your thoughts about uh, some of the things that have been said about the SEC conference, particularly from Mr. Stoops in Oklahoma? Mm -hmm. when, you know, people, people look at, at the SEC and they feel like everybody acts like the SEC is it, and they have, they, 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 they have a resistance to that kind of thinking. Coach, what do you say to that as a, as a coach that's coaching in the SEC right now? I'd be saying the same thing Bob's saying if I were in the Big 12. Mm. <laughs> but, you know, again, every league, I, I've been in the Big 12. When, the year I, the, when I was there for three years, you faced Sam Bat Bradford, Colt McCoy, uh, you know, some of the quarterbacks, RG3. I mean, it, it was amazing uh, offensively what the league was accomplishing. And it was very difficult to defend a lot of the offenses in the league. And I think every league has got good teams. Well, must champ, thank mm -hmm. you so much for joining us as college week could college football week continues here mm -hmm. on ESPN. And Will Must Champ joins us live in studio. No one can beat the SEC, but can the SEC beat Alabama? Must Champ discusses the Gators chances. Sports Center. Burton takes off and he's off to the races down the sideline. He broke a tackle. He might go. What a run. Touchdown. Bear. Himself. Big game breaks loose. Driscoll touchdown. And Jones might ice it right here. Touchdown. Ball game. 24 unanswered Florida points. Will Muschamp and the Gators won 10 games, tied for the SEC East, made a BCS bowl game, and still have lots of areas for improvement coming into this season. We'll get to those in a second. Let's move on to your football team. Your offense was not very productive in the passing game. You won with special teams and defense, as we saw in that montage there. Rank, in order of importance, the things that you want to see to improve that passing game. Protecting Jeff Driscoll, getting some young receivers to make plays, and improve quarterback play. Well, I think it starts, first of all, with decision-making with Jeff. You know, taking the ball to the right spots, uh, the mental quickness of the passing game, taking it to the right people, uh, protection up front at times. And it wasn't always on the offensive line at the tight end position and the back position as far as the protection is concerned. And then making plays down the field. Uh, we've got to be more productive. Uh, we've got to be more efficient throwing the football, especially making vertical plays down the field. You brought in five young receivers. You've got guys that have been around but haven't been super productive. The question is, when you look at, at all the talent in Florida and all the talent on your team, you know, where are the playmaker guys? You don't have a Percy Harvin every year, but where are the guys who can stretch the field and make plays? Well, I feel like well, those guys have developed on campus. Quentin Dunbar, Trey Burton uh, will play a role in, as a receiver. Uh, Rafael Andretas, uh, Latroy Pittman, Andre DeBose, Solomon Patton are going into their senior years. Those guys got to continue to come. And like you said, we signed five young players that are going to get their opportunities. Luches Purifor will play on the offensive side of the ball. How much will depend on how those guys develop. You said you want to be a, a running team, a defensive team. Matt Jones is not a name that probably a lot of fans around the country know yet, but they might know him by the end of the month of September or October. If I have it my way, they'll know him very well. But I got a lot of confidence in Matt. Really came on as a true freshman, played extremely well in the latter part of the season, a big explosive back. And, uh, again, uh, we want the 1,000-yard rusher to be the norm at the, at the University of Florida. Uh, Mac Brown's also another young man that I'm really excited about, and I think we've recruited well at the position. Targeting has become a point of emphasis. You'll be penalized and ejected if officials rule at the, at the heat of the moment that you've used the crown of your helmet to hit an opponent. Some of the biggest hits, most celebrated plays on defense last season would have led to ejections. As a guy with a defensive background, what's your opinion on that new rule? Well, I didn't know what we were doing was so wrong. First of all, I'm all for player safety. That's number one, and I know we want to eliminate some of the head contact, and I'm all for you know, lowering the target. That's fine. I don't really like the new ejection situation. I think a lot of mistakes could be made in the heat of the moment and putting too much on our officials. And our officials in the Southeastern Conference do an outstanding job, but I think putting it on them, I think you look at the NFL model, uh, Commissioner Goodell sits down on Monday morning with his staff and determine whether it was a flagrant hit, whether it was a malicious hit or malicious intent with the hit, and, and I think that's the way it ought to be handled. I know you've wanted to cut down on penalties. That's one implication. But when you lose a guy for the game, I mean, how are you going to coach your guys differently to, to deal with this? I mean, we're, obviously there's going to be some controversial calls with this rule very early in the season. There's no question. They're going to err on throwing the flag and, and, and ejecting the player, which I totally understand that. Uh, but we got to target lower. That's the number one thing. You just got to target lower and, and, and hope for the best. You guys were a great team winning with outstanding special teams and defense. What's the upside? If you can just get the offense, what, 
25 percent better, 30 percent better? Do you feel like uh, national championship talk is reasonable? Well, Chris, I think we've made those steps offensively. I think I saw that in the offseason program going into spring, and, and as we report August 1st, I think we'll continue to improve and get better. I think we're better uh, as it can be more productive at every position. The tight end position I'm worried about. We lost Jordan Reed, who's an outstanding player for us. Defensively, I'm real worried up the front, I mean, uh, up the middle. I mean, you, you, I'm young, but I'm old-fashioned. You better be strong <laughs> up the middle. And defensive tackle, linebacker, and at the safety position are three positions I've got serious concerns going into camp. That's where the loss of Morrison could be big. Toledo and then a game at Miami week two. Wilmot's champ and the Gators, big expectations this year. Thanks for your time. Chris, thank you very much.